Hi everyone, let's go over my medium time frame, low time frame and micro bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with my medium time frame scenario where we are looking for a three-way structure to the downside in a WXY where currently price is working on a Y towards the downside. Now wave Y can't be finished over here because this low took the low of the one of the left on some exchanges and if you want to see an impulsive structure to the upside after potentially wave Y would have been finished, you want to see a wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 but then wave 2 is not allowed to take the low of the origin of wave 1 which has happened with this wick over here on a couple of exchanges and that's the reason why we're still looking for a three wave structure to the downside and then a wave A, three wave B and eventually a C to the downside where inside this wave B we might be forming a complex structure in a WXY but more about that on the lower time frames. In this particular scenario we see a couple of FIP times preferably I like wave Y to finish after the 0 0.618 and before the 1.618 which is not on the chart at the moment and the one-to-one -one is currently on monday the 26th of june at 2 p.m so this area is interesting and also if we look at potential support areas for this wave y we have a yellow box over here support area between 24.850 and 24.3k and a blue one just a little bit lower between 22.6k and 21.9k if we then go to the lower time frame, switching to the one hour, then this is the scenario I'm keeping my eye on, where we're then looking, as mentioned, for a WXY. So a WXY, this has to be a three-wave structure to the upside because a zigzag is invalidated in a 535, again, because this low on some exchanges has taken this low on the left, and therefore a zigzag is invalidated. So that's why we're looking for a WXY, where preferably this is the low of wave X after a nice three-wave zigzag structure, ABC to the downside where the target area for wave C was the one to the 1.236 which as you can see has been very nicely respected but on this chart we do now have a double bottom at 25.3k which is very interesting for potentially a liquidity grab before then a move towards the upside and if we look at a wave Y a wave Y most commonly is a zigzag a flat or a triangle and a potential flat scenario can be interesting in then a first structure second structure and then a wave C to the upside which then creates an a b c wave move where we take the liquidity below these lows maybe even already hit the target box the yellow one before then a wave c to the upside which then is a five wave structure where the most common targets for wave y are over here the 0 0.618 to the 1.236 with the 0 0.618 sitting at 26.6k the 1 to 1 at 27.4k and the 1.236 is sitting at 28k and what's interesting about the 1 to 1 and the 1.236 is the confluence that we have on the chart so around the one-to-one -one, we again have that double top 27.4k very interesting and we have the 1.236 in confluence with this blue target box sitting between 28k and 28.1k for potentially then resistance in this area and then again a move towards the downside if we then go to the micro scenario this is the bearish scenario that I'm looking at at the moment. So in this case, we then have a wave W, which is a three-wave structure to the upside and an ABC where the one-to-one -one has been hit, followed by a three-wave corrective structure, again a zigzag with a five expanding flat five-wave move and then a wave X hitting the one-to-one -one as well and then now working on a wave Y towards the upside. A wave Y in a WXY has to be a three-wave structure. Now there is quite a bit of overlap, so we might have some sort of a three-wave structure structure over here but in a wave w over here we could see a clear three waves in a wave x we can see a clear three waves and preferably in a y you would also like to see a clear three wave structure but of course it can grind slowly to the upside if however wave y or in this move to the upside that's the bullish scenario actually if we're going to push towards the upside on volume then the micro bullish scenario should at least be the one taken into account but as it stands now the 0 0.618 has been hit for a wave Y, which was sitting at 26,170. As you can see, it has been respected at the moment, a bit of resistance here as well. But then again, do we really see a three wave structure over here? Quite difficult to say. That is low time frame counting on the three and the five minute. What did happen is that this wave Y, at least this high, has been made around the 0 0.618 FIP time, taken the FIP time that is from the low to the high of W to the low of wave X to compare the length in time of W 
W with the length of wave Y. Now, preferably, I like to see the high being made between the 0 0.618 and the 1 to 1, or potentially the 1.618. So, yeah, I, I would like to, this, this target box still to be hit. We still have a target box just above price at the moment at 26.4K, basically. And what happened right now, and that's actually what KG saw very nicely in the Discord group, is that the gap has been filled. So we had a bit of a liquidity void over here. We entered the liquidity void twice. We never actually closed it hitting this wick, but that is what happened right now. So this wick has been hit and now we have at least a little bit of a retracement, but I wouldn't have any problems with price continuing at least a little bit further to the upside towards this target box, which can either go directly or of course in a clearer three wave structure. And that is all up to what price wants to do. In a more bullish scenario, because in this bearish scenario, you expect after wave Y a move to the downside, common targets of wave Y one to one to the one dot two three six with the one to one just above the blue target box in the bullish scenario which is a new one that I show in the video, we have then a wave one over here, impulsive structure and a five wave move to the upside with then a very, very long sideways wave two and then a W, X, and then we have a wave Y over here for then the end of a wave two where the 0 0.5, a common target for a wave two has been hit. And then we're now moving to uh, in a wave three towards the upside. I'm not sure if this is really my preferred scenario, it might be an alternative compared to the maybe more preferred bearish scenario actually. Um, first of all, the 1.618 over here, if this is then a three wave move, then a three wave move and another three wave move, usually a wave X in a structure like this, the 1.38 is a maximum target, the 1.618 is a rare target, which over here as you can see has been hit and kind of respected one can say. And then for a wave Y, the 1.618 is a rare target and this is the fit that you pull from the high of 1 to the low of W to the high of X and then the 1.618 is a rare target for a wave Y, but it is a target nonetheless. And this is then the end of wave Y, the end of wave 2 and now we're in a wave 3. So this overlap could also be 1.2s, 1.2s for eventually more ups Side. But if that is the case and we are going to push towards the upside right now, then you want to see a big move happening with also a big increase in volume, right? Because that is what we are looking for uh, if we are in a bigger wave three. Now for a wave three, the minimum target usually is the 1.618 at 26.6k, but there's many extensions for potentially higher prices in a wave three. Of course, keep in mind, it has to pass the target area, the resistance area that we have over here. So if price is going to continue its move towards the upside, either in three waves or directly, it's going to be very important to see what price is going to do over here and what potentially the CVD divergences are going to be if price is going to hit this area. Now we did have bullish CVD divergences, these ones have played out over here uh, because price now has taken this high. We also had some bearish CVD divergences. These have been invalidated. So we first had the bullish CVD divergences over here and also between this low and then the retracement over here. Also actually between these lows, higher low in price, lower low on the CVD. Um, and this has now played out. So this low uh, high has been taken, this high has been taken and the bearish divergence, which has existed sec like a second because first we had this bullish one and then the second divergence was this bearish one, um, has been invalidated because price has now taken this high. And also from a probability standpoint, the first divergence that you see on the chart is usually the one that has the higher probability of playing out, which was this bullish CVD divergence, which has now indeed played out. Finally, we have news. Everyone, this is my last video uh, today because I have an event where I have to speak tonight. So make sure that you trade safe. My next update is 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, um, Central East European time. But we have news. I will be active in the Discord group as much as I can. But at 2.30 p.m. Central East European time, red flags over here. Volatility might kick in because of high impact news. So make sure around 2.30 p.m. Central East European time, you trade safe. You have your plan. You have your strategy. You have your entry requirements. And you have your stop loss somewhere in place safely. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion. Also check out the memberships if you haven't, also with altcoins and stuff. Thanks for watching and subscribing and I'll see you at the next one. Bye bye.